This is Bishop Gilbert Coleman, and you're listening to Straight from the Pastor's Heart Ministries. Prepare yourself to receive what's going to be a life-changing word. That yes, God said that the earth was what? Without form and void, right? Darkness was upon the face of the deep, and he said, let there be light. Then we know all the stuff he created, and then he created man. After he created man, then he tells man, watch this. Now, I want you to set earth in order. How did he do that? By starting to name all the animals. Because before he started naming anything, there was no order in the earth until Adam started naming it. So, child of God, here's the deal. When are you going to begin to speak order to your life? When are you going to be able to, watch this, to allow yourself to start saying the things necessary to even bring rearrangement or reconstruction to your life? By what you say. And to change up some of the stuff that you have said. Things that you know only took you back and didn't take you forward. And you even voiced it to some other people and those folks, watch this, took your negativity and ran with positivity and did some of the things that you should have done with your ideas. All because of the fact that you felt like you were just too despondent to do anything with what it was that God gave you. And could it be that there are those instances when the Lord has allowed you to be put into a damaged situation only to see what it is that is inside you be revealed? And could it be that you have been in such an ordered way of life for such a long period of time that he now wants to put you in a place of disorder so that you can now learn how to order your steps? Because there are some of us in this room that you have always been accustomed to everybody else always ordering your world for you. And you have never known nor learned how to be able to do some things on your own without always having to have somebody else to tell you what to do, where to go, and how to do it. So you always take your cues, you always take your orders from everybody else. There are some of us in here right now, you are petrified to start thinking your own thoughts. And to think that somehow or another that you could even possibly remotely be able to start declaring your own world and to be able to create your own environment and to create your own atmosphere. Always reliant on somebody else and their dream to be able to give you some uh, credibility of life and to try to help you live life in some way. Because the only way you know how to live life is being able to fulfill what somebody else has already created. So you do nothing with your own. And so literally, watch this. I mean, no offense to nobody, but I'm going to tell you the truth. And so you literally end up living a mindless life. Yes. Because working for somebody else and doing everybody else's stuff, you don't need to think. All you have to do is continue to work within the confines and context of the system that they have set in place. So you don't have to do no thinking. It is only when you make up your mind that you're going to live outside of the limits. It's quiet up in hell. I'm going to say it again. No, what's this? What's this, Camille? You need this. You need this. You got to learn how to live outside the limits. Stop allowing other people to dictate what you can have and how much of it you can have. Y'all, quiet on the bishop tonight. The Lord has given us such an empowerment that we, with this mind right here, can be able to 
release and unlock the treasures of the entire universe. Things that people, many of them, only dream of being able to ever go to that length or go to that realm. And you have the ability to go there and visit there any time you want. And yet, most of us, rather than desiring to be a mountaintop dweller, you have already resigned yourself to be a low valley dweller. And that you've determined that that's where you're going to live all your life because that's what everybody else does. And if you're going to really be somebody in this life, you have got to come to the point to where you learn how to be a nonconformist. I did not say rebellious. But I did say you have to be a non-conformist. That means that you don't do things the way everybody else does it because you realize that what you have been given to do is entirely different from somebody else. How many times do I need to tell this house that the Lord has birthed you with your own rhythm? Stop allowing yourself to always want to dance to somebody else's rhythm. I'm going to say it again. Stop allowing yourself to dance to somebody else's rhythm. I'm going to say it to y'all over here. Stop allowing yourself to dance to somebody else's rhythm. Because watch this, what excites one person is not necessarily going to excite another person. What is one person's passion is not necessarily going to be another person's passion. And so therefore you have got to learn how to be disciplined enough and focused enough to continue to concentrate on the discipline that God has given you, on the passion that God has placed inside of you, and it is reserved just for you and your gift mix. Yes, sir. So the giftings that God has given you, there should be a desire for you to carry that out and stop thinking that you are never ever as good as somebody else, that you'll never be as, as, as equipped as somebody else, that you'll never have what anybody else has. Don't worry about that because the thing is, you have more than what they have if you just use what you have. Amen. The enemy wants to get you to a place where all you do is envy somebody else. And because you become so envious of somebody else, you find yourself in competition with them. And watch this. Now, here's what gets me to Pastor Rashid. We want to be in competition to try to get nothing. Because in reality, they don't have nothing. They don't really have a whole lot more than what you have. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so therefore, why in the world are you allowing your thoughts to be encompassed with a bunch of material things that don't mean nothing at all and there are things that you can have that are much greater than that? Elements of life that are much more sustainable. They are eternal in nature. They are divine in nature. And you can have it all. You can have it all. You can have everything and anything you want out of life and there is nobody who can keep you from it David stayed on the run for six years but watch this he stayed on the run for six years but he had already been anointed king and so here's the deal even though what God has spoken to you takes you some time to get to But you know what he said. And because you know what he said, you stay focused on that and you don't allow yourself to be conditioned by the length of time that it takes. Did you hear what I said? You keep walking by what? Come on, talk to walk by what? You walk by faith and not by sight. What it looks like, what it feels like, does not mean a thing. Are y'all hearing me? It doesn't mean anything at all. Why? Because I've learned to be content in whatever state I'm in. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> That's right, I'm good. Hey, let, let, me, let me say this. Let me ask this question. I don't want you to answer me. How many of you 
ate today, but it's, let's say, but I want you to, if you, if you just chose not to eat today, I understand, okay? But I'm talking about you ate today. Let me see your hand. Okay. So you ate today. Now, that was just about 98% of the folk in the house. You ate today. So since you ate today, then God kept his word. Give us this day our daily bread. So he gave you today's bread. You got that. So since you got today's bread, he kept his word. So if the Lord is keeping his word day by day, then why are you afraid to trust him day by day? Why don't you just believe God? That he will absolutely carry out anything and everything he has ever said that he will do for you. And stop putting your time frames on God. Amen, church. Amen, church. Stop trying to make God so small. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm talking to all of y'all now. That's right. Stop trying to make, stop trying to make God so small. You always trying to make God fit into this little place you set for him. That this is the only way that God operates. This is what God does. You know, this, this is how God, uh, you know, he, this is how he moves, you know. And, and so you, you put him in this box and you refuse to let him out. Because you only want God to operate in such a way that makes sense to you. But the scripture says, oh, both the depth and the riches, both of his wisdom and knowledge. How great are his judgments and his ways are past finding out. Romans eleven thirty three. Uh-huh. So since God does things in such a, a miraculous way, it defies and denies explanation. Why are you always looking for him to do things that's going to make sense to you? It ain't supposed to make sense to you. If it made sense to you, it wouldn't be a miracle, would it? So why don't you just let God be God? Let God do it his way. Let God do it in his own time. And stop asking a bunch of foolish questions. There should only be one thing on your your lips. Yes, Lord. He said it over. I heard it. That's all you need to say. Yes, Lord. Whatever it is that you demand of me. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It don't have to make sense. Yes, Lord. I don't know how you're going to work it out. Yes, Lord. I don't know when you're going to work it out. Yes, Lord. Remember what, he's, what it says in Hebrews 11 about those matriarchs and patriarchs of the word of God. And how it says there that these people, they continue to believe God and they never saw it happen. But they still believed God because they believed God for a country. They believed God for a place that was literally out of this world. And they believed God for it, even if they didn't get a chance to see it. And that's how deep your faith has got to run. That you're trusting God for anything and everything. Amen. And that there was no, listen, there's no bit of bad news that you could ever hear that would do anything to put your fire out. This flame continues to burn. And I don't care who come and throw water on it. Amen, Amen, somebody. Because think about what Elijah did. Because once he was there with the prophets of Baal, you know, and the prophets of Baal, you know, they they did all their little dancing and all that kind of stuff. They were jumping and shouting on the altar. In fact, he said they broke the altar down and all that. They began to cut themselves with knives and all of that. And he said, hey, call him a little bit louder. He said, maybe he's on vacation. He said, call him a little louder. He said, maybe he's in the restroom. Call him, man, call him. And they kept calling, and of course, Baal never answered. So he said, okay, my turn. He said, y'all get out the way. Rebuilt the altar. Once they rebuilt the altar, he said, put stones around, 12 stones. Then he said, put wood, put wood around, and watch this. And then pour water on the wood. He said, now why in the world are they going to pour water on the wood? Because he wanted to show them that his God was even able to burn up wet wood. 
So in other words, so in other words, there is nothing that humanity can do that would ever be able to stop the 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 the, 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 the awesome and miraculous power, divine power of the living God. Nothing can stop it. Nothing can block it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And the Bible said that when that fire fell from heaven, the fire came down, burned up the altar, burned up the rocks, burned up the wood, and licked up all the water. So what did that say to us? That there's nothing too hard for your God. What's this? What's this? The only thing, hear me now, the only thing that's too hard for God is your stubborn mind. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Shut the house down. Yeah, your stubborn mind, your rebellious ways, you not wanting to do things God's way, you coming to the house of God week in and week out and hearing the word of God talk to you and preach to you week in and week out and you keep on walking out of here and never use the stuff that's been placed in your spirit, always thinking that somehow or another that this ain't for you. That all you want to do is come up in here and get your shout on, get your praise on, hear another word that stimulates your mind, but never your spirit. Are y'all hearing me? And so, child of God, it is now time that every one of us in here realize that there is so much more that is lying in wait for you. Listen, listen, you ain't waiting on God. You are not waiting on God. God is waiting on you to to end your procrastinative, slowful, lazy, lackadaisical ways. He's listen, he's waiting on you to get rid of all your dumb excuses. Quit making excuses of why you can't do this and why you can't do the other and why this won't happen and if and, you know, and if and if this would happen and if that would happen. And look, God is saying, I don't need no more if ands, buts, or maybes from you. Do it. The word of the Lord says that all should be happening, coming out of your mouth. Yes and amen. Y'all quiet. Amen. Amen. And God has, oh my gosh, the things he wants to do in your life. Because understand this. I'm giving to finish with you. Listen, he can get no glory if you do not bear much fruit. And everything that you or I will ever have to endure and he needs you to embrace in this life is for you just to go ahead on and do what he tells you to do, how he tells you to do it, when he tells you to do it, and sometimes even with who he tells you to do it with. Amen, Amen, church. Because let me tell you something, y'all. Do you know what? What's this? There's going to be instances where he's even going to send you into some wicked places with some wicked people. And he's going to send you in there and he sends you in there to them people. Why? So you can go in there and change the atmosphere. Amen, church. You have to go there and could it be that the only reason why some of you have not been able to move on in life the way you really want to move is because of the fact that those folks that he needs you to touch while you're in that environment, you have yet to touch them. You have yet to minister to them. You ain't saying nothing to them because you continue to bellyache all about how you want to get out of there and you're sick and tired of these people and you're tired of being around them and all the, you're sick of this and sick of how they talk on Monday mornings and all that junk they talk about. I'm so tired. I want out of here. I want out of here. And God is saying, you You ain't going nowhere. You ain't going nowhere because I sent you here to, and y'all keep on saying, shifting the atmosphere. Shut up. If you ain't going to shift the atmosphere, then shut up. Don't sing the song that another time. If you ain't going to change nothing, don't sing the song. Because you singing that song ain't nothing but a lie before God. Because you know you ain't trying to change nothing. Because in fact, how are you going to change something else? You can't even change yourself. You refuse to change yourself because you allow your mind to remain in us, to, to remain to be the same cement block that it's been for the last five years. Stop being like Martha. 
I had Jesus say, Martha, Martha. He said, Martha, you said you got all kind of stuff on your mind. And when you read the Greek, what the Greek really means is Martha, you got your mind is filled with mud. That's what it means. It said, but Mary has chosen that good part. She chose to sit down here and hear me, t- hear me teach, hear me talk. And so why in the world is it then that I can be used of God week in and week out? I keep on coming here and I'm using the Lord to pour out to you sweat running all down in my socks and my shoes. And when I leave out of here, I don't pour myself out to y'all even on a Wednesday night, pour myself out to you. And then your situation don't change at all. And it's because of the fact that you chose for it not to change. Because you waiting for somebody from the secular world to change it for you. Who can I find that's going to change it for me? Maybe they'll offer me three jobs. And I'll go work all three jobs and I'll be able to make it. No, what you're going to do is kill yourself. You're going to kill yourself and then watch this here. You know what's really the problem, though, DeVito? What the real problem is, is that you'll do that and you're not free. You ain't free. There's no liberty for you at all. Because all you're going to be able to do is whatever they tell you to do. Because you're scared to do anything for yourself. Amen, church. Amen. And whether you hear me tonight or not, and you go on back home and you say, well, how was, what was, how was the teaching tonight? He was nuts. Tell him that. Tell him that. I want you to tell him that. Tell him that Coleman has moved to another place in his own faith. I have moved to another place in my own faith, and I'm going to continue to say this kind of stuff to y'all because I'm trying to move you from where you've been. I'm trying to move you into a realm of thinking that takes you beyond anything you've ever experienced in your life before. I'm trying to bring you to a place to where you are stopped depending on a system that ain't really trying to help you. Because them people is sitting somewhere making backroom deals about how they can make sure that they get the maximum while you get the minimum. And the problem is, Lucy, is that there are too many of us, even some of us sitting in this room right now, who are willing to accept it. Yeah, well, how you going to vote? You going to vote Republican or Democrat? Are you going to vote at all? How you going to vote? And normally, no, know what? Know what? We're all getting ourselves poised for this election. And know what you're going to do? All you're looking for is to see which one of them of those two parties is going to promise you the most money. You are not thinking about who it is that's going to try to help you be free. You're quiet in here. Yeah, because that's all we think about. Who going to get the most money? And whoever come with the most money, that's who I'm voting for. Because they said they're going to give us 10 more dollars a year. Come on now, go for it. <laughs> and you settle for 10 more dollars a year when you could have had a million or two million more. Yeah, that's what I said. That's what I said. That's what I said. That's what I said. And I'm looking at all y'all and I'm saying it to your face. You know, because you've been, listen, because why in the world, watch this. Why in the world do you want to keep on living a life where all you get is Kool-Aid? Now, Kool-Aid tastes great, but it's not always the greatest thing for your health. So in other words, why is it then that you want to continue to accept stuff that really does not do anything for your overall life health? But you keep on accepting that stuff because that's all you've ever learned. And all you know is to live a dependent life, but the wrong dependency. 
Because you depend on a system that's broke and been broke for centuries. And they ain't really trying to change it because if they do change it, it's always going to be in their favor and not yours. So when you're going to do something for yourself, when is it that some of you are going to get beyond your self-imposed fear? I said self-imposed and do something more, do something different than what you've ever done before. To get out of the rat race, to get out of the trap that's been set for you years ago. And you still maintain the same old mindset. Because listen, this ain't about how much money you have. This is about how much brain power you have. Now, I'm getting ready to make another violent statement. You ain't gonna like this. I'm gonna make another violent statement. Watch this. Pastor Rashid, watch this, because this, this is violent. I know that you've heard all your life that knowledge is power. That ain't true. <laughs> Red already, I love it, Red. Knowledge is not power. I know you're looking at me strange. What? Come on, explain it. That's right. Knowledge is not power. Let me show you why it's not. Because you can have a head full of knowledge and have nothing. Have all kind of knowledge and never ever get ahead in life. It is only the application of that knowledge that actually brings you power in this life. It is not until you use what you know. That's how you access power. What good does it do you to have, you can have a master's degree, have a doctor of theology. And think about this here, how there's some of these professors teaching in college and they teach in finances and broke. They teaching this stuff, teaching students how to do accounting and all that kind of stuff. And they themselves don't have no dough. They need that job bad just to make it. Because if they're going to be able to teach finances in college, then it should be a bunch of people who are multimillionaires. Those are the ones that should be teaching it. Not somebody trying to talk to me and here it is that you barely scraping the bottom of the barrel. What I need to hear from you. You can't show me where to go. You're not even there yourself. So then why is it, y'all, that we continue to follow people who really can't take you anywhere? You know what? Because the age-old adage is true. Misery loves company. We love being around people who are just like we are. Now, let me say this, because you know what? There are too many of us, Keisha, who are afraid to break the mold. You are afraid that if you leave your friends, they're not going to like you. They're going to talk about me. Because I would dare leave them behind. Now, now here's another statement for you. Is this going to mess you up too? Because you know what you said? Well, once I do have money, money ain't going to change me. Okay, now there's a certain, certain ring of truth to that. There's a certain ring of truth to it because internally it should not change you. Amen. You should still be rooted and grounded yes. even though you have money. Yes. However, money will absolutely change your lifestyle. Yes. Yes. You're not going to be able to live the same way no more. Amen, Amen church. Money will change your lifestyle. And again, like I said, but as long, as long as you don't allow that money to be able to take root in your heart, you are right. See, that's the reason why the scripture says that the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, right? A root. Okay, the love of money is a root. But watch this. God will have no problem giving you all the money you don't love.
got it? In fact, he wants you to have the money. Because you'll take the money and use it, what? For his kingdom. That's why he wants you to have it. He wants you to have it so you can use it for the kingdom. Amen. And that you stop running around here, and, you know, afraid to tell people you're going to be rich. So, yes, I am. I'm going to be rich. In fact, I'm rich right now. Watch out. Say, watch out for the businesses I'm going to start. Watch out. And, and begin to speak that stuff. To be able to say, hey, in three years, boom, 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 boom. Here's what's going to happen. A year from now, sudden, da, 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 da. And say it. And then you can be like King Uzziah, Second Chronicles chapter 26, verse 5. And it says right there that Uzziah was 16 years old when he first took the throne. He reigned for 52 years. His mother was Jechaliah, whose father's name was Ahaziah. And it says, and in the days of Zechariah, the prophet, who had visions to understand what Israel ought to do, it said, as long as Uzziah sought the Lord, God made him prosper. <laughs> as long what as he sought the Lord what happened God made him prosper that's all you have to do child of God that's all you have to do you can play for me Kevin that's all you got to do keep on seeking the Lord don't be afraid to franchise don't be afraid find some people who you know you can trust set you another shot once that shop is up running, set up another shop. You hear what I'm saying? You can do it. And stop worrying about where the money going to come from. Because that's usually what happens to us. It amazes me. The Christian people talk about walking by faith. And then we all, well, where the money going to come from? Hey, where's your faith? You're going to believe God. Bishop Brown, my friend down in El Paso, he, uh, he had a another business some time ago, a couple of years ago, he had a business that was called A Taste of Buffalo, and um, this dude, wings and all that kind of stuff, down there when had one in El Paso, and he had another one in the place I mentioned earlier called Alamogordo. He closed them down and uh, he just recently opened up another business and this is miraculous because the business is now located on the largest military base in the country. Fort Bliss, which is right there, outside of where the church is. And so they set it up on the base. It's called Shot Town Barbecue. Shot Town Barbecue. And man, they got it going on. That food was good, man. I'm telling you, they got man barbecue ribs, barbecue, they got uh, tips, they got brisket barbecue chicken, barbecue turkey they got the beans, they got the coleslaw, the potato salad they got the corn on the cob man, I mean muffins, they got it going on they got it going on and, and, and there was nobody but God, nobody but God in, in fact their location it's amazing, right, the location as soon as you walk into what they call the PX, the post exchange, as soon as you walk in the door and, and, the, and all the clothes sales and all that kind of stuff is over here to your right, but then when you turn to your left and you come up into the food court, the very first vendor, Chi-Town Barbecue. And man, when you, walk, when you walk up to the door, getting ready to go inside, when you walk up to the door, you can smell, oh Lord have mercy. I can smell it right now. That barbecue was, don't, I'm sorry, DeVito, I, I'm hungry too, man, I understand. But that barbecue, I mean, that smoke hit you in the face, oh my God. Good stuff. Good stuff. And I mean, they had steady business the whole time we was there eating. Steady business, steady business. Everybody coming. Black, white, Hispanic, Asian, everybody coming. Everybody coming. He said the first week that they were in business, the first week, let's open up on a Friday, the next, by that next Friday, the first week, they had already made $30,000 first week. First week. 
So that means that they're in line to do at least $120,000, $150,000 for the month. And, and watch this. And he's going to franchise. <laughs> Sister, I know so you go for that, right? Take out barbecue. Yeah, take out barbecue. And what's this? What's this, Leroy? And they have exclusive rights that nobody else can open up a barbecue place but them. And watch this. But here, but here, Aaron, here it comes. Here comes the blockbuster. He started with no dough. All he started with was a dream. He had a dream. He had no money. He started, man, and now they're rolling. And they have a second side. They have a whole second side to the base. And they have another post exchange on the other side of the base. And so they already have plans to open up the next one on the other side of the base. <clears throat> Franchise already in motion. And see, and the reason why is because he operates, Barclay, with no fear. No fear, y'all. No fear. And if you can ever get yourself to where you stop being so afraid of everything and move by faith, watch God back you up. Amen. I know what I'm telling you is right. I know what I'm telling you is right. And like I said, I'm saying it tonight and I'm going to keep on saying it every time I see y'all. I am, I, I, I am a multi-millionaire. I am. Creflo Dollars. Creflo Dollars said that stuff for years. To him, so much so that a young man, a, a newspaper a uh, reporter, young man, he just started out with a new newspaper, and I'm sorry, for his college. And he wanted to interview a preacher. And um, he had heard all this stuff about Creflo Dollar Lou. So he says, I want to interview him. And so he made an appointment, came and saw Creflo Dollar. And he said, uh, you know, uh, Reverend Dollar, he said, I need to talk to you, man. He said, because um, you are one of the most affluent pastors in our community. And we definitely want to get your testimony about, you know, you becoming this millionaire. Uh, and you really haven't been in our community that long. And so he said, let me stop you right there, son. He said, first of all, he said, I'm not a millionaire yet. But he had said it so much that everybody else around him believed it. But now, look at where he is. He is a multi-millionaire. But you got to be willing to say it, y'all. Stop being intimidated and threatened by your assumed defeat or your assumed failure because you would dare try to do something that maybe nobody else in your family has ever tried before and just because other people in your family or other friends of yours have failed does not mean that you are just one more time put your hand over your heart and say I believe God now give God a praise right there then come on <laughs> Bernard that's what you call that man I believe God yeah I believe God stand to your feet with me Whew. my goodness man boy that thing is ringing in my spirit tonight man I believe God I believe God can't nothing stop me. Can't nothing block me. Can't nobody get in my way. Amen. I am already more than a conqueror. I am an overcomer. Amen, y'all. And nothing can separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. 
because in Christ Jesus I always triumph wow wow amen amen so so now 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 let me say this now because I, I want to make sure everybody get this instruction now what's going to happen is that I pray we're going to come and we're going to give our offering tonight and I probably will hug some of y'all but I'm telling you nobody asks me no questions y'all got that tonight nobody asked me no questions I believe that this has been plain and simple so don't come ask me no questions and I'm because I'm telling you right now without without any I mean just I, I no flinch in me if you start asking me if you say well can I ask you no no take this word and as you ride home if you're riding by yourself you're riding with somebody else you don't discuss it but when you get home get on your face before God and let the spirit of the living God release you and start putting some of your ideas in motion like you all that stuff you got bottled up inside of you you've been sitting on this stuff for the last two and a half years two and a half years you've been sitting on stuff yes you two and a half years you've been sitting on stuff I can see you right now sitting sometime got the stuff in front of you crying Lord I wish I I don't know I don't know just keep on I don't know you do know that's the problem you do know and, and see you know what's even more tragic you have taught other people to do what you've been afraid to do yourself you watch some other people get become successful off of stuff you fed them and I know it turns you off because they didn't come back to say thank you turns you off I ain't doing nothing for nobody else and, and did, but here's the thing you ain't gonna do nothing for nobody else but you ain't do nothing for yourself don't work like that don't work like that tell you what if you want to show them then do something got it do something you got to love yourself you got to love you please look up at me sis you got to love you stop putting yourself down because of stuff that happened in the past let the past be the past God erased your past now when you gonna forget it stop putting yourself down because of the fact that things that you knew you could have done years ago didn't happen things that you allowed other people to do around you where you could have probably done a whole lot of other things much better however that don't matter now God has forgiven you now forgive yourself and when you go home tonight and look in the mirror you start loving on you again. And watch that beautiful woman come back to the forefront again. Because you are that. You are a beautiful woman. You start loving yourself. And get back to be that sharp woman you used to be. Yeah, because you used to be, I mean, you, you, man, impeccable. They used to talk about, say, man, there she go again. Look at her the way you address yourself get back to that woman you stop hiding your beauty stop letting the devil lie to you tell you that God don't care about you that God somehow or another is going to condemn you he does not condemn you he loves you and he has forgiven you You've been listening to Straight from the Pastor's Hearts Ministries. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And especially for that man and for that woman out there who does not know the Lord Jesus today, please know that it's a very, very simple process. You don't have to jump through hoops. You don't have to jump up and down or anything like that. All that the Lord is looking for you to do is one simple thing. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised it from the dead. You shall be saved. Please know it's just that simple. You don't have to do anything else. But more than anything, make sure that you listen back into us once again. Don't you dare miss it. 
We'll have some vital information for you once again to help you continue this great journey along with the Lord Jesus Christ. Love you all now. God bless.